Hello guys, if you've seen the first video on this series, uh, it was about different linings and dot work. I'm following Ben Fisher's uh, tattoo course. Today what I'm going to do is actually do a second drill of these rows, but this time around I want to go for sevens here, then maybe these lines, these interior lines. I'll do them on three, maybe some of these leaves I will do them on three. Of course maybe I could also like just go on seven almost everywhere and then just like in a few or maybe just the interiors with a three and then enhance some of the outlines with fortins. I don't know, I've actually didn't go for a plan, I'm practicing, trying new stuff. I want to take you through my journey learning how to tattoo, I want to share with you my thoughts, I want to experiment, I want to gain muscle memory and eventually ending up inspiring you guys to do the same if that's the path that you're looking to follow. Let's get uh, right into it. So as Ben advises, if you're right-handed you should be going from right bottom to top left. Also, if you don't want to smudge all your stencil, one thing that you should definitely do, it's not quite wipe, but just pat your uh, tattoo. What I'm going to do is I'm definitely going to go more on a seven liner on the outlines of this. Also this, 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 this. And then probably go more on a three liner inside all these details. Let's see how, how this goes. So one thing you can do is that like, since I like to do this kind of movement, I can like go and rotate myself, even though I cannot rotate my customer. Uh, I usually can definitely go and rotate a little bit my body. In this case though, for the purpose of the video, I'm going to first do a line which is like that. And honestly, I don't really fancy, fancy this, this movement. So I have my point, going deep. For instance, if it was a person, maybe you could have like turned it slightly there, then maybe move less your body. But usually you can move your body quite well around, move your hands, try to get yourself into a position where you're not smudging your, your stencil and where you're kind of using your hand in the best position possible. So now I'm going to do this, then this, then this, then this, then this, and leave all of these little lines, well probably this, but then in the interior lines, I want them to be thinner. So I'm going to use my three liner at some point to do that. And see how I'm going, am I, I'm going in. So I'm tapering in and tapering out. Because I really don't want to have like a dot at the point where I went in and went out. If you leave your machine there, you're gonna get a dot. And see, I just tapped on it and it's perfect. I can clean, it's not smudging my stencil, it's perfect. That's what I'm looking for. So I'm giving it the stretch I need. So at this point though, as you can see, my finger and my hand, it's probably like going to go over the stencil. If you're using a good stencil solution on someone's body, you probably won't have any trouble. It, it's not going to go away like that. On these mats though, it goes away faster, even though this has been uh, drying up for 24 hours now. But nonetheless, like be careful with that, because if you lose your stencil, it's going to be a pain in the ass. Although this type of details, you can actually not have a stencil, you can eyeball them if you're practicing, if you've practiced enough drawing and if you're good at drawing, you can definitely eyeball them. So now I'm gonna go down here, I'm actually gonna go and do maybe part of this leaf. And Ben talks about this, so even though I could do this on a single line, I don't. I have one spot here, one spot here where I can stop. So these two, it's probably even better if I use them as, as stopping spots. So what I can do here is that I can like go here for instance and then go here 
and then stop here because even though like this would be very tempting to do I can smudge my my stencil which I don't want to and like I could definitely pick up on this line since there is a joining line I could definitely pick up there without it even being seen now here I, I run into a little problem so right now I will have definitely to work here like that because there's not much of what I can do of course what I could do though but then careful with not smudging all of your stencil is like go up and down but in that case if I want to do that maybe I'd, I'd be better off like tattooing this part first um, so yeah it's sort of something that you have to figure out as you go when you're tattooing what what is the best point of attack and try to feel comfortable like for instance here I don't want my hand to slide so much because it's like a very small area so I'd rather have like the support uh, and, and the stretch here and in this case I might be even using a little bit my wrist super important I'm seeing my needle I'm tapering in tapering out here as you can see in real skin this would have been a problem because I was like not stretching but yeah so far I'm quite happy with my lines the way they're turning you can see that they're quite consistent in width so I'm going to outline as much as I can and once I'm about here I'm going to start doing these details on a three line so I'm going to change and then go go back and and move move towards those, those lines Yeah, I'm not deep enough. See there, I was better lifting, not lifting, not lifting, not lifting, and here maybe I can even turn my my hand. Well, in order not to smudge it, I'm gonna tap it a little bit. Yeah, yeah definitely better. I can go there and here I'm not sure okay this goes like this nice to have the other rows just sitting there to Okay, what I just did, you have a risk of smudging that. So I could have left this once after I had done all this area with my three liner. So I'll be super sure that was not like smudging it all. You can see this line is definitely not deep enough. And in a real tattoo, you don't want to be doing this. You don't want to be going two, three times on a line. You don't want to be going deep, too deep either, but definitely if you're not do, going deep enough and you have to go there again, it's probably just causing more trauma to the skin and that's not so good. Okay, so now I'm going to change. I, I really want to have a thinner outcome on this line, so... So this is just an artistic choice, uh, but I'm using these drills to practice this kind of stuff. And you can see like the three liner is way hard to ma to master this line. For me, it's hard to, to master, definitely. Ben says none is forgiven, forgiven in different ways. I couldn't agree more with him, but like seven liner, I mean. So 
Oh, I'm going way too deep there. Man, this positioning, I don't, I don't find it comfortable. I just don't know. Yeah, guys, leave in the comments. What would you do in this situation? Like, I have to do these lines. I don't find them comfortable. I don't, don't know. Should I, should I just like move my body, kind of like tackle them here, as I told you before? What would you do? Because like you can see, these lines are pretty good. These lines are pretty bad. That's why you practice, so you can get all of them good. But I like the choice of doing like a, a thinner and thicker line in front. That's, I think it's a good idea. Um, here I go again. Okay, I just did something really, really stupid. I was grabbing my line with a three liner without wiping it, so I have no idea where I am. With a with a seven liner, probably it's gonna be forgiving. With the three liner, this is not forgiving. Never do this. And again, this is the purpose of these videos. I'm trying to practice and comment on my practice. And hope So yeah, I think I'm pretty comfortable doing this. So using my my full hand movement. And then there we go here. And here you can see I, can, I totally forgot to do the, the larger. Maybe it would have been like a, maybe something I forgot, something I actually want to keep. I don't know. Let's see. If I don't want to keep, I just have to go here and maybe here complete this one because I just did the line there. We'll see. As you can see, like it's a bit different. Here and then here. Once again, I really like this movement from top to bottom. Just sliding my hand, leaving my elbow go away. I really think it makes for a better lighting. Okay, so at this point I'm gonna go back to my 7-liner and basically go through all of this tattoo because I'm not gonna go on anything on a 3-liner, maybe I could go on this one, but I really don't think it's a good idea because it's sort of the same value of leaves and stuff like that. Maybe then you can enhance some, some of the lines with the 14-liner or even just sculpting some of your lines, but now I'm just gonna go to make the 7-liner all the way through. And I'm rinsing my machine, uh, I always do, because uh, it's nice that, that the, the, the blood and the, and the ink don't get like dry in your machine, in your tube. And 
And so here is something important. Again, I chose a point where I already have a line to finish it. So I, this was my point A, this was my point B, because now then like, you see, my, my movement would not be natural and I don't want to be, I don't want to have that. My line would not have the same consistency and I really need to move my machine, move my hand, have a better positioning uh, for everything. Maybe, maybe move a little bit on my body. That's what I'm going to do now. So I can really go and tackle this line. Once again, here I am, I'm tapering in. And now I'm tapering out. And actually I'm going to do this, this uh, few... Yeah, this one feels pretty comfortable. Because I can just move my... I can slide my hand, so... Again. I'm still super comfortable with this one. I'm rotating my hand. I managed to to make a whole line. It's better if you can do it, of course. You have less risk of seeing where you picked it up and all of that. But don't commit to a line if it's going to turn out bad. And now like, now that I've done this, probably gonna go here, so I can go here before I tackle this, so I don't have the risk of smudging that. And really take your time to make these lines. Yeah, this is probably my 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 favorite movement. So if I'm doing like in a diagonal towards the down, because I can feel my elbow moving away from my body, and my hand is just completely settled. And here I'm actually going to go like this. I feel it's comfortable in this in this occasion. I'm usually not so comfortable with this positioning if my if the the machine is tipping backwards because I feel it's all the weight I can't hold it with my with my hand whereas if it's like this I can hold and it's positioning there so but here I was actually able to sort of rest my machine a bit here and it was a bit more vertical so it was super comfortable. Always get comfortable. Get the feeling for your machine. So here, yeah, I'm gonna go first to the line at the bottom. See my hand slid a little bit there. And also what I was doing, I was simulating, so my stretch coming here, because my hand was pulling this way, so so my stretching hand would be easily here, so I could even use my, see, this to avoid, to create some frictions, to avoid it to slide. And I'm actually going to do that now, using my paper towel to avoid some friction, to, to create some friction, and to avoid my stretching hand sliding. Like this, I'm sure I'm able to keep my slide. I'm tapering out, tapering in. Because where I'm joining, I really don't want to see that blob of two lines. So now I'm gonna. So this will be a tough part because it's very hard. Everything is super close. It's hard not to not to smudge and something. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm gonna do this one. Maybe then finish this one, then you do this one, and then I'll attack that part.
So here I stopped because I had a nice position. I can turn a little bit my machine and maybe find Yeah, maybe find a way of that is a bit more comfortable and you cannot see where I picked it up because it's easier or it's hard, harder to see where I pick it up if you stopped it at a point that already exists. I'm, I'm doing this as a compliment of, of, uh, to, to, the, to the Ben Fisher course. I'm following it along and I'm trying to give you my thoughts and showing you my practice drills. So maybe you guys see stuff that Ben has not mentioned. Uh, or you see stuff that I'm not doing well and you can help me correct them. Um, yeah, that's basically my, my goal with these videos, is to really be able to share my work, well, my practice drills, and be able to learn from them as well. And yeah, and commenting them it actually helps me think more about what I'm doing here. As I told you before, this, this part seems a bit hard to tackle because you have a lot of directions, a lot of stuff that you don't want to smudge. So what am I going to do is that I'm actually going to start by a small line here, then this bigger one, then I'm going to do this small things, then maybe this small one, maybe I can go up this one, yeah, definitely I can. Try and, and, and really study your path before you, you're doing it. Try to see if you're doing it top to bottom, bottom to top. Choose your starting point, your finishing point. Yeah, I really feel this movement is the most natural movement that you can make. So get used to feel your machine, get used to feel your needles, get used to feel the movement of your hand, the positioning and everything, it will come super naturally. If the more you, you feel it, the more it becomes second nature. So now this one I can connect and end up there. The other one I'm actually gonna go bottom to top because it's easier for me. To make this upward, inward movement. And you see I'm always tapering in and tapering out. I don't think Ben stresses this enough, honestly, but I, I think this is something super important that you feel the taper in and then taper out so you don't end up with a blob where you start your line. So don't forget to stretch.
as the days go by, the weeks go by, I'm getting more used to my hand speed in relation to my machine. I've also found a nice voltage for these skins, for these artificial skins. Of course, so if I would be tattooing in real people, depending on the part of the body, maybe I would have to adapt that for a little bit higher, a little bit lower. But uh, yeah, it's, it's nice that you really get used to to your equipment and to to these movements. Soon I'll also be wrapping this this uh, skins onto a bottle because it will make it harder and more realistic. I'm just going to go inside the fly. Put them against the, the needle bed. Of course, here I should be rotating my machine a little bit. Hello again everybody. So my camera ran out of battery and unfortunately I can I don't have a spare. Um, so here you can see the final re result of the rows done with a three round liner, with a seven round liner and with a 14 liner. So I ended up enhancing some of some of the, the outlines of the of the leaves. So if you like my videos, don't forget hit the like button, comment, because I will try to interact with you. I think this is the purpose of doing these videos and also subscribe to the channel don't forget to ring the bell so you can get all the updates uh, right on your YouTube channels and yeah thanks for watching bye